Vacari Collector Car Auctions. Enthusiasts and collectors from coast to coast have come to Biloxi here to bid on some classics and have a great time. Well, but it's fun. It's, it's a great time with your friends. You're in here bidding on cars. You're looking at a lot of beautiful cars. We're selling today. Welcome to another edition of the Vicari Collector Car Auction coming to you this time from Biloxi, Mississippi. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ted Jones, and we're going to show you some gorgeous cars, every kind, size, and description. But how about let's start things out with a street rod, a 1928 Chevrolet. Take a look at that small block 350, two big AFBs standing on top right there for fuel. Chrome exhaust headers right here with cutouts, or you can go through the exhaust to make it legal. Obviously, you got to have wide white wall tires. Inside, this thing has a lot of room, almost like a limo. And another hit on this, suicide doors. They made it real easy to get in and out. Look at that beautiful white interior, how much room there is in the back seat. We've got a lot of cars coming up for you. But first, let's check in with Dave Dobson. Well, Ted, here's another one that just happens to be from 1928. It's a Stutz. Now, Stutzes were originally built for speed. In fact, the first one was completed just in time for the inaugural Indianapolis 500 in 1911. This particular Stutz, lovingly restored from its original look a few years back. Under the hood, still the original inline eight, but a lot of extra power added from the folks at Callaway, famous for the Callaway Corvette. In fact, the dash is even signed by Reeves Callaway. Just one of the many unique cars for sale here in Biloxi today. Up next to the 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air two-door hardtop, oh, yeah. blue and white roof, new original style interior, 350 engine with the 700 R4 transmission with power steer and brakes, white wall tires. Would y'all please get out of your seats? Come up here and look at my car. Yeah. I have a oh, bed on the phone at 16. Oh, oh, I beat 17, man. 17. Oh. 17. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Well, Dave, this is the most popular of the Chevrolets ever produced, one of the tried five. The 57 was really popular because of the fins and the new look over the 55 and 56, but the big news was the introduction of the 283 V8. Well, the big news was also the tail fins. The styling is, is one of the things that really makes this car unique. Kind of makes it the iconic American automobile, certainly from the 1950s, without a doubt. This is one of the most popular colors, by the way, their color combination. They had in 57, you see a lot of Chevys painted this color, even if they weren't that color originally. The 283 was the first time General Motors offered a motor that had one horsepower for every cubic inch. You could get two four-barrel carburetors, you could get fuel injection, you could get 283 horsepower on a 283 V8. And that went zero to 60 in 9.9 .9 seconds. Doesn't sound impressive today, but it was great for the time. Now understand, this car is going relatively cheap for a 57 Chevy because it does not have the original 283 engine. It's a lot of different philosophies with cars, Ted. A, a lot of folks want the original. And of course, if you have all the numbers matching and everything, you want to keep that car as original as possible to keep the value up. But, but some folks don't care about that. They want to modernize it, maybe make a resto mod. This one's not as far. They just changed the engine. But uh, some of these old cars, folks want to add disc brakes, maybe even a new, a new chassis to stiffen up and give it a better performance. And a much better, more efficient engine, too. However, understand we're already up to $25,000, which is pretty impressive. Why? It's a 57 Chevy. Now he's saying no, but you notice the ringman doesn't stop. And it's the technique like that that's made our friend Ben there, the ringman, a world champion at doing this. He's one of the best. Watch Ben working. He's still shaking his head no. Now 27, Jim. 
Now Fabian, putting some Fabian in the rain of Earth, 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 putting some Fabian in the rain of coming to you from Biloxi, Mississippi. Are you a drag race fan? The history of drag racing? What was the predecessor to the modern funny car? Or even the early funny car? The V's. They were called FX cars, which stood for factory experimental. Here is a reproduction of what a B factory experimental might have looked like. Why a B? It's got a 289 engine. This is a Mercury Comet Cyclone. And this is the way they look. A lot of times they altered the wheelbase. You can see the front end all jacked up with a straight axle and everything like that. This guy put a nice custom interior in this one. Had it been an actual FX car, it might have been just a little more Spartan than this. Beautiful metal flake paint job. What a nice collector car this would be for someone. Up next is a 1966 Chevrolet Chevelle convertible. 396 engine, four speed, vintage AC, power four wheel disc brakes, power steering with a manual top. And when the top goes down, the price goes up. The surprising thing about the 66 Chevelle, which, by the way, there was a song by Paul Revere and the Raiders called SS396. A lot of people aren't aware of that. The biggest thing about this, it was a new body on the Gen 1 of the Chevelles. The 64, 65 body was entirely different, but this is the same chassis. So it's still considered a Gen 1. This is when Chevrolet went to what they call a Coke bottle body, which is kind of a classic for that era, Ted. Well, and the other big earth-shaking news was in 66, you could get the 396 engine, big block, which was very popular. 61, reserves all, 61. Jay, go to center now. Yeah. To show you the value of these, look at this. We're all the way up to 61000 but Dave, it's going to sell. The reserve is off. Yeah, and the reserve is, is the minimum price the seller wants to sell the car for. Yeah. Number one sold, number one sold. Thank you, Jay. Dave is with our new owner of this car. Congratulations, sold a car, 65,000. What makes a Chevelle like that so valuable? Uh, it's convertible, big block, four speed with air, great colors, great stance, just a hot car. Uh, I saw you looking at that thing before it went up. What kind of things are you looking for when you check out a car? Uh, fit and finish, uh, you know, make sure there's no rust, uh, car's straight, uh, the overall quality. Up next is a 1980 Toyota FJ40 Land Cruiser. The 4.2 liter inline six, four speed manual transmission, selectable transfer case, less than 1,000 miles since frame off restoration, yellow exterior with desirable canvas soft top, black vinyl interior including rear jump seats, highly detailed undercarriage, ready to show or drive, as close as you can get to a brand new 1980 FJ40. It really is, Ted. I poked my head inside this thing. This looks like it's right off the showroom floor. This is, this is how it must have been 40 years ago. Yes! It's amazing what has happened to these original SUVs because in addition to the Toyota, obviously the Jeeps have gone way up in value, as have the Ford Broncos, which are kind of the king of the class right now. And I think the reason is probably because everybody knew the 57 Chevy is going to be a classic, so they held on to those. These vehicles were seen as sport utility vehicles, so people went out, they took them off-road, they beat them up, they used them as everyday grocery getters, and so there's not a lot of them around in, in great condition, so to find one like this is, is pretty rare these days. They got it. Telephone's in. Steve's in. Steve on the telephone. 60 grand? 60. Yeah! You see right there the guy on the telephone, he's actually taking a bid over the phone. In addition to that, Ted, also a lot of bids coming in over the internet. You can get on Vicaria's website and bid as well. All of Vicaria auctions are live streamed and you can make arrangements in advance to actually bid either online or over the phone. You got Steve in. One more time. 
If he takes reserve off, you won't back. 61 five. Maybe. Now, you heard the ringman asking him if they lift the reserve, will you bid? They told me to break it down. I'll do the same for you. 61 five. Yep. 62 on the phone. 62. Ladies and gentlemen, I just got the answer. Got the that. reserve is yes, off. 61 five. Uh, 62 Bullock. on the phone. 62. 61,000. Sell it to me. 62. Going once. Going twice. I have. Sold, sold, sold. Sold the Vakari way, baby. The Vakari way right here. Number. And where am I at? Bloxy. <laughs> you know where you're at. I go to so many places, I forget where I'm at sometimes. These professional ringmen do travel a lot doing that job all over the United States. Steve Williams is the deal doctor, and he's making deals over the phone. How easy does Vicari make it for folks to bid from home? It is no problem at all. We bid, obviously, live. We bid on the phone. We bid on the Internet. On the phone, a lot of times I'll have two and three different buyers at one time on the phone on the same car. And a lot of times they, it just helps the buyer that, to know that you're walking around the car, you're looking at the car, even though they can see it on the Internet. A lot of times you know, somebody that's here scratching and sniffing really adds a lot of value. But if you can't make it to the auction in person, we will work out a way for you to buy the car and to own the car of your dreams. Between the deal doctor and some of the world's greatest ringmen and the rest of the Vacari crew, Vacari Collector Car Auctions can help you drive home a classic. More to come from Biloxi right after this. Welcome back to the Vacari Collector Car Auction. This week coming to you from Biloxi, Mississippi. Now we showed you a tribute car earlier in the show. Here's another one. What's one of the most popular C2 Corvettes ever produced? The 1963 with the rare split window design. 327 with fuel injection, but I told you this is a tribute car. This is actually a C6 platform from 2008 with a perfect fitting 1963 Corvette body. And one of the most rare parts of the 63 Corvette that everybody wants is this, factory fuel injection. Up next is a 1968 Chevrolet Corvette L89, matching numbers, all original, including engine, transmission, rear end, starter, alternator, transistor module, documented frame off restoration. Blue with black interior, very rare, one of 624 produced in 1968, has T-top power windows, power steering, power brakes, original rally wheels. It's one of the stars of the show today. Ted, this is not a restaurant here. This is a real deal. Uh, this is a real 1968 right here. Has the rare L89 engine, beautiful blue color. Still not as popular as the 63, 67, 66 Corvette line. And when this car came out, this was the first year of the new body style, the C3. And the, the brochure said Corvette 68, all different all over. And it truly was. It was a, a departure from the previous generations for sure. Some of the big Corvette fans actually called that body style the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it kind of looked like one, but still a beautiful body. This was the first year of the C3, as I said, and, and that ran all the way up till 1982, which is kind of hard to believe. They didn't change them as often then. Now, of course, with the new C8 and C7, it's absolutely amazing where Corvette has come. It's still the ultimate American sports car. Got it now, 65,000. Ladies and gentlemen, shout hallelujah, the reserve is off. We're selling today. I'm 62.5, 65,000, Peter. I'm going to get 65, 67 and 5, 67 and 5, 66. Now 67. It's got to be 67,000. Anybody else? 66, reserve is off. We're going to sell it. Ben wants him to go ahead and sell the car. Of course he does. You know, as hard as these ringmen work, you would think they get a commission for getting the sale. They do not. And as the car rolls off, Dave Dobson is with a familiar face, the new owner of this beautiful Corvette. Well, Jay got that 68 Corvette. Uh, Jay, why'd you grab it? I'm uh, from the Volo Auto Museum. We buy and sell collector cars. The car needs a little freshening up. We'll run it through our shop, service it, detail it, uh, verify all the numbers and codes, and uh, we'll put it up for sale. This guy knows a great car when he sees it. 
2008 Chevrolet Corvette two-door coupe. It was just completed. It's a C2 retro Corvette 1963 split window coupe conversion. Low mileage, 18,000 actual miles. The coupe retains the comfort, safety, and reliability of today's modern autos. Chassis and drivetrain have not been altered or cut in section in any fashion. It has the LS3 motor in it. Well, folks, this is the car I showed you a little bit earlier. Now, while this is a tribute car, it's going to bring incredible money. Look, we're at $100,000 already, Dave. And these resto mods have become increasingly popular. I touched on it earlier. You know, you want the great looks for the old classics, but you want a car that's comfortable. It's got air conditioning. It's got disc brakes. going to stop faster. A lot more horsepower, better safety on the new cars. There's, there's all kinds of reasons to like resto mods, and a lot of the purists aren't going to want to hear me say that, though, Ted. I would not set this car in a museum. This car is meant to be driven. That's why it's up to date with that nice 08 chassis engine and everything thing like that. Another reason, by the way, you might want to rest a mod instead of the original. A lot of horsepower for back in 1963. This was making 250 horsepower, but in 2008, 430 horsepower to 500 horsepower. You're making twice the power. Reserve is off. Thank you. 145, 150. They just lifted the reserve, so this car is going to sell at 145,000. Let's see if it goes up from there. When you hear that ooga horn, that means the reserve is off. Something Pete Vicari added for a little bit of color. Going once, going twice, the reserve is off. Anybody else? I Bam! Sold at 140. $5,000. Up next is a 1979 Pontiac Trans Am two-door with automatic transmission, 350 cubic inch, power steer, power brakes, air conditioning with a full barrel carburetor, tachometer with new paint, new wheels and tires, power windows, tilt steer, digital gauges, new interior with T-top small block Chevy with aluminum heads, an aluminum radiator on a 1979 Pontiac Trans Am. Hey, don't forget it. Oh, Ted, six-year-old me just got really excited about this car. Beautiful car, beautiful color combination. This, however, is not the most valuable of these Trans Ams. Two years earlier, the 1977 black with the gold eagle on the front is the one everybody wants. As a matter of fact, they've made tribute cars of that black Trans Am because it was a big star in the motion picture, Hal Needham, Smokey and the Bandit, starring Burt Reynolds. As a matter of fact, at a collector car auction, that actual car that Burt drove sold for $500,000. Another reason why this car may not be the most valuable, this is the most popular year of the Trans Am. They sold over 116,000 of them in 1979, so more of them around probably means they're worth less, relatively. A supply and demand applies with about any car. We'll see some more of that later on in this program. That reserve comes off, you're going to get in, right? Got it. Now 30 Pay for that price, 30 grand. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Now 31. Oh, is that reserve? You're in there. You start the party, you got to watch what you're doing. He's going to hook you up. One thing that's notable about this, Ted, this was the 10th anniversary of the Trans Am. This is the second generation of the Trans Am, which started in 1970. It was the first year of this body style. The front end was restyled for 1979, which makes this new and improved. We're not far. I just should say that. I can't tell you this. Real close. Yep, yep. Got it. Now 33. Ladies and gentlemen, the reserve is all They go seven now, John. You won't buy it. The Lucari way. Okay. 32,000. 33,000. I'm going to get 32. You're out. I am. I'm out, John. You're out, buddy. 32. 33. Buddy's in. 33. I'm out. Bring it down. So the car is sold for respectable money. Dave is with the winning bidder right now. You came all the way from Colorado to pick up that 1978 Firebird. That's the car you always wanted and you finally got to grab one. Yeah, I always wanted one. I've got a collection, but I don't have a, a Trans Am, and I thought that's a nice car. We'll take a break when we come back a Bentley Luxury Time. Welcome back to the Vicari Collector Car Auction. When is a station wagon cool? I tell you, when it's a 1953 Buick Estate wagon. Now this thing is a, a Woody, and this is about the end of the Woody era in the early 50s. There were only about 1,800 of these made back in 1953. Very few still on the road. Real wood on the side of this, of course, and this is the original wood, the original V8 under the hood as well. And one styling cue I love here, the ports on the side. This is a Harley Earl design, never functional, but always a very cool thing on the Buicks. And one thing about this car, no reserve. That means this vehicle is going to sell today. 
Next is a 2007 Bentley Continental GT convertible all-wheel drive with the V12 twin turbo, 570 horsepower, automatic six-speed with lots of options. Like it's Bentley time, folks. A 2007 Bentley convertible. Remember, when the top goes down, the price goes up. This one only has 47,000 actual miles. But I got some shocking news. This was not built by Bentley Motors, the British designer. No, this was built. Dave by Volkswagen, who bought Bentley back in 1998. Is it air cooled like the Beatles, Ted? <laughs> no, not hardly. Actually, they're the top of luxury. Some people consider them above the Rolls Royce for luxury. I know this doesn't have the air cooled Beetle engine. It's got a, a twin turbo six liter W12. That's a standard engine, all wheel drive, 552 horsepower, Ted. Oh, yeah, that's 12 cylinders, folks. W12 at that. Yes, good car, yeah. And it is the lap of luxury, but one thing about it, too, they love gasoline. Well, it really scoots. It's 5,500 pounds, Ted, but it goes 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. The old adage, there's no substitute for cubic inches. There you go. And some people would say if you have to worry about miles per gallon, you don't need this car. People that buy this car don't really care how much it is. If you ask how much, you can't afford it. If you ask why, you don't deserve it. It ain't nothing but money. It's just money. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. And one thing I really like about this, that you don't see that hump from the convertible top in the back. It's because Bentley relocated the rear suspension to enable the top to go all the way down in. Do it, do it, do it! I have bam, sold the car $51,000. Congratulations. If you're a child of the 1970s, this is probably one of the first cars you ever wanted. It's a dune buggy. It is California cool. They even made cartoons about dune buggies. There's a Volkswagen engine in the back under a fiberglass body. This thing is made for a good time, and it's just one of the huge variety of cars you can find here at the Vicari Collector Car Auction. And by the way, no reserve on this vehicle. It's going to sell today. You know, they'll sell anything here at Vicari. Let's look at the juxtaposition. You just had the height of luxury and performance. You had the Bentley, and now down to the dune buggy, which is just plain fun. He's going to break you down like a shotgun. 36. 36. 38, man. And the original Volkswagen dune buggy was built in 1964. It was called the Myers Manx. Bruce Myers built it. He was a surfer and he was a boat builder, so naturally fiberglass was his thing, hence the fiberglass bodies on all these. And all the rest of it's not a Myers Manx, it's just an imitator of that original style. He's got four, you gotta be 41. Yeah! yeah. Yeah, sure. Yes. Hey, I'm here to sell cars, baby. Bummer. About any car you would want, you can find at a Vicari auction, let me tell you. Well, earlier we saw automobilia selling signs and that sort of thing. Also, mini bikes were real popular at this show here in, in Biloxi. Both mornings of the auction, tons of restored mini bikes. Dave, you know, most of these dune buggies use the Volkswagen yeah. motor, very dependable engine, which sometimes is called a Porsche. Well, Porsche started the air-cooled rear-engine cars, and Volkswagen fought along that way. Hey, you do this, do We're at $4,600, and you'll notice the Ringman worked just as hard trying to get under $5,000 as they just did $51,000 previously. So, $4,600. As you said, the ringmen, no commission, but the rising tide lifts all boats, so the better Vicari does, the better everybody does. This classic Ranchero was auctioned off yesterday. The winning bidder donated it back to be sold again today. Proceeds will go to the Al Copeland Foundation, fighting to put an end to cancer. Two front suspension, power steering with disc brakes, dolphin gauges, cold air conditioning, spray in bed liner, factory wire spinner hubcaps. Let's give JC a hand before we get started here. And a nice round of applause to the gentleman who is putting it back up for auction today. 95! Yeah! 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 12! 12! 12! Yeah! Yeah! 13! 13! Talk to me, talk to me! Yep! 
Very interesting cars here, or trucks. What, what is it, Ted? I don't know if it's a car or a truck. The Ranchero and the El Camino of, of similar ilk from that era. A lot of people think that the Ranchero was the answer to Chevrolet's El Camino. You would be wrong. You see, the Ranchero came out in 1957. The Chevrolet El Camino was not introduced until 1959. And the age-old attic, is it a car or is it a truck? It's a tar. I think it's a crook. Whatever it is, it's cool. Seventeen five, sold it. Seventeen thousand bars. Seven seven six. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Dave, you, sir. grab the new owner. Robert and Linnell are here from Longview, yes, Texas. Robert, you've taken home that beautiful Ford Ranchero, fitting for a guy in a cowboy hat, of course. Yes, I, I bought it for a good cause. How much did that play into so into your wanting to buy that vehicle? Uh, high, well, I was going to buy it without the foundation, probably about eleven, straight to and eleven thousand. What's it feel like knowing you can do that for for yeah. such a good cause? Very Thank good. So it makes much. my heart. All right, what is our next time? Every, everything about it is wonderful. Okay. Three. That rare Studi Baker is coming up next. Welcome back to the Vacari Collector Car Auction in Biloxi, Mississippi. For my friends and family, everybody knows that I am all about the Indianapolis 500, so this car caught my eye immediately. It's a 1957 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser in sun glitter gold. Yes, it's one of the original pace cars, number one of 1,200 built that year. It's got a V8 under the hood that makes 290 horsepower, and of course it has the Merc-O-Matic transmission. The Mercury Turnpike Cruiser was the car that led Pat O'Connor in the field to the green flag in 1957. That year, Sam Hanks won the race, retired in victory lane on his 13th attempt. He finally won. Henry Shane is the owner of this beautiful Mercury Pace car. Henry, how long have you owned it? Uh, probably about 10 or 12 years I've owned this car. It's been in my collection in uh, Metairie, Louisiana. How many cars in your collection? 165. All the cars in my collection are either one of a kind or as rare as I can get. I have about maybe 20 one of a kind where only one were ever built. Do you ever get emotionally attached and find it hard to get rid of something like this? It's getting that right now. This is one of about four they pulled out for me to take two to the auction and I rejected all but all the rest and pulled out other cars, you know. it's. I'm attached to all of them, really. It's just that I want to be in the market to buy new type cars that I'm interested in, and I can't add a space to my museum. It's to the max. So I have to sell one to buy one. Hands up, bitch! Yeah! Got it. Now 50 foul, 40 foul, we get 50 foul. This is a very rare car indeed. The Turnpike Cruiser was introduced by Mercury Division of Ford Motor Company back in the era when Eisenhower was building all the interstate highways. Ford was on top of it and came up with a car that would be perfect and sell very well. This car was and is absolutely gorgeous, Dave. And it's rare, Ted, only produced in 1957 and 1958. And in those two years, only 1,200 convertibles were made. 54. You want to do it? 50, yeah! Add to it, this one was actually a pace car for the Indianapolis 500, so again, ultra rare here. And that was very unusual. The pace cars usually were a little bit more sporty and everything like that, but this car absolutely deserved it. By the way, you'll notice how the hood opened back in 1957 for just being kind of different. Watch! Watch! 58,000. I don't believe you can do it. 58, yeah! You know, I think the Turnpike Cruiser would have lasted longer if the 57 Chevy hadn't come up. I think it just kind of overtook it in popularity. Go ahead, your turn! I think you're right. When you look at the car again, notice on the back of it something that was very popular back starting in the mid-50s, Continental Kits. It was a really unique and very popular way to carry a spare tire instead of putting it in the trunk. It was an extra cost option. And a lot of people actually put the goes on as an afterthought to make it their car. 61, going once. 61, going twice. Appreciate it, yeah. Thank you. I have Second again. Sold sold. Wow, that's land. going to Desert Land. It's an Orlando, indoor amusement park. You know, by the way, a huge car museum in Florida. What you got, Ted? Take a look at all those front ends. Some of them you recognize, some you don't. This I'll bet you don't. Studebaker Packard released a car that was very popular. This is the example of the 1957 Hawk, only this is the top of the line. Folks, this is the Golden Hawk. 
289th engine, but here's the catcher. It's supercharged with a Paxton supercharger. Same thing was available on the Ford in 1957. Louvers on the hood, very outstanding. Look at those beautiful wire wheels, real wire wheels. This was the era back in 57 of the fins. This is an excellent example of fins. Let's see what this car does in the auction. Already at 15,000 for the Studebaker Golden Hawk. Only made for three years, Ted, 56 through 58, and only 9,300 built over those three years. Now, I assume this had the Paxton superchargers. Some of them were equipped with McCullough superchargers, by the way. 23! 23! It's amazing. This car is going to sell, to me, cheaper than it should. I would think with the scarcity of these things, I, I would think that would bring the value up a lot more. And I'm really surprised this isn't going higher faster. It's a beautiful car, again, shadowed by the 57 Chevy. But some people say this is really better looking than the 57 Chevy. <laughs> You saw me hanging out there with Eric. Everybody's looking at him because he's bought so many cars already, so they're expecting him to scoop this one up as well. 28,000, now 29. Now 29. Now 30,000. Now 31. Now 32. This car is a buy at 31,000, let me tell you. Remember, it's all original. It's got the original engine. And nearest I could tell from checking this thing out, I, I, I label it as perfect everywhere. Interior, exterior, all amazing. 33,000. That young lady looks uh, very intent on buying this vehicle. I don't have anything on it. 34, 5. 30, now 35,000. Now Pete McCary himself working on this one with the bidder. 35. She says she's done, but is she? Enter the ring men. One more time. Well, it's going to sell. The reserve just came off. Anybody else? 35 five. 36 dollars Take it away. 35 five. 36 dollars I have sold. $35,500. Congratulations, ma'am. A real buy at 35 five. Dave Dobson is with our proud new owner. Stacy here from Tennessee. Did you come with a budget? Did you come with a plan of what you wanted to buy? Yeah, I went over a little bit. <laughs> I did, but, you know, it's only going to go up in value, so. What are you going to do with it? Drive it. After the break, we'll have a station wagon. Oh, that's different. You're watching the Vicari Collector Car Auction coming to you from Biloxi, Mississippi. Up next is a 1954 Ford Ranch Wagon Station Wagon. 292 cubic inch V8, it's a T85 three speed manual transmission with overdrive, maroon metallic exterior, custom painted wood grain detail, fully restored with mercury body panels and trim. Color match wheels with mercury hubcaps, new white wall tires, power front disc brakes, two tone tan leather interior, hidden CD AM FM stereo, one of a kind mercury body 54 wagon. Kind of a strange and different vehicle. Earlier today, before the auction started, Dave Dobson caught up with the owner. I was looking around at this beautiful 1954 Ford station wagon. Then I looked on the front, David, and I saw this as Mercury. So what's the story with that? Apparently, the gentleman that built this car was a Mercury fanatic. What I understand is they didn't make a Mercury 54 station wagon, so he bought a Ford and turned it into a Mercury. So it's got the tail end, side skirts, the front end, it's got a Mercury dash, Mercury motor, and a beautifully well done car. Why this car? Why'd you pick this one up in the first place? I, I thought it was beautiful, and I thought it'd be great for this auction down here in Biloxi. 
Now you wonder a lot of things about this car. For instance, was this the mainline or custom line ranch wagon when it started out? Or was it the top of the line country squire or country sedan? All those were offered by Ford Motor Company, but the guy loved Mercury's. Also, notice the overhead valve 292 engine. 1954, it would have been a flathead V8, the last year for the flathead. If you want to know your 1950 engine facts, Ted Jones is your guy. Yeah, pretty easy. All the overhead valve stuff, Chevrolet, Ford, everything, came out yeah! in 1955, and the war was on. It's still raging. 41, now 43. 43. Yeah! Now 46. Your turn, man. Jay, shake your head the wrong way, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. Come on, Jay. That signal, by the way, that Ben gave me, he's done with it. You say 46. Gonna sell it. This is truly a custom car, folks. 46. Yeah! Ah, Ben got him to go again, didn't he? Now that gentleman is out. Or so it seems. Right. And never say never, right? Oh, man, right? right? yeah! The gentleman has bought enough cars that Ben knows his number already. <laughs> Up next to the 1966 Pontiac Grand Parisian Coupe. It's a 454 cubic inch two-speed automatic power glide transmission, 10-bolt rear end, reef turquoise exterior, turquoise vinyl bucket seat interior, center console with console shift, lap belts, front and rear, dual flow master exhaust, side exit dual exhaust, power steering, power brakes, 14-inch racing wheels, Goodyear tires, believed to be 65,000 original miles. Canadian market, top of the line GM car built on the B platform. Similar to the Chevy Impala with Pontiac exterior styling. We got hubcap, fender skirts, this all goes with it. Those are the spinner hubcaps, by the way, Dave. Kind of made unpopular by Ralph Nader. <laughs> he made a lot of things unpopular, Ted. He made safety popular, though, we should say that. Uh oh now i didn't know the name grand parisienne because this is a canadian car this is uh the canadian version i think of the ventura Pony ventura that's correct there were quite a few of those cars or canadian cars that every once in a while show up in these collector auctions the other key to this car is the big block 454 and look at the car it's absolutely gorgeous I don't like running second. He goes, what y'all doing? We're looking at it. In 1966, this two-door sport coupe like this, only 5,100 of these built in Canada. And rarity adds to the value of any of these cars. That'll knock him out of the park right there. <laughs> well, Pete's talked <laughs> talk right, that bidder into a $35,000 bid. Come here. Come here. Thirty-six thousand. Thirty-six thousand. Money needs some help, so he calls the master over. <laughs> the power of persuasion. There you see Eric, the gentleman in green, surrounded by his buddies, and of course he's got the Ringman buddy and Pete Vicari working on him as well. He ain't coming. It didn't work. Oh, uh, we're done. Okay, I have sold $35,000. Well, the new owner has to be very happy with that. He got it for $35,000. Dave Dobson is with him now. Why'd you like that 66? That 66 is a rare collectible. I mean, it's a very rare collectible, and it came in at a good price. I mean, the car is worth more than that, so I really got a steal here at Vacari. I really appreciate being invited to Vacari. They need to get down here and see these cars, man. It's awesome cars out here. When we return, we'll see what this high-performance piece of German engineering does on the auction block next. Welcome back to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and Convention Center in Biloxi, Mississippi. Up next is a 1973 Ford Bronco two-door. Has a new body kit, a 4.6 liter aluminum block from Lincoln Mark VI, Borla exhaust, Wildwood disc brakes, rebuilt differentials, American racing wheel with Dakota digital dash, 
Vintage Air Tom's Bronco Interior. The Bronco was actually introduced after this kind of vehicle became very popular. First the Chevrolet Blazer, then the Jeep Cherokee, then the International Harvester Scout, then came the Bronco and immediately became very popular. Now in the aftermarket collector cars, they have gone completely crazy in value, Dave. I never knew what SUVs fetched. They weren't called SUVs back then, by the way. I remember everybody called them Jeeps back in the 70s, regardless of the make, but I never realized what this whole world was like until I did a series called Brand New Muscle Car Classic Bronco, and I got to know all kinds of folks in the Bronco community and realized it's a whole different world, and these folks love their Broncos, and, and these vehicles are fetching tons of money. You can see right here we're at $81,000 already. They were all sold as four-wheel drive vehicles, a shift on the fly Dana 20 transfer case, locking hubs were standard on all of them, and the Ford 9-inch rear, which became popular with drag racers of all people, with a Hotchkiss drive and leaf springs, front axle was a Dana 30. And this was the most popular year for the Bronco. 1973, Ford sold over 21,000 of these vehicles. In contrast to the twin I-beams of the larger Ford trucks, the pickups and everything, the Bronco used radius arms to locate this coil sprung front axle along with the lateral track bar, allowing for a 34-foot turning circle. Now 88, did we do it? 88. Plug it in his ass. 88 Absolutely <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Our auctioneer lost his glasses there when he put the hammer down. 92.5. Now 95,000. And you see, the gentleman there that's bidding, he's the one with the Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. He said he had to sell one to get another one. This is the other one he's trying to get. <laughs> Look, games and shit from Buddy there. Oh, well, that one was for the off-roaders. Now here's one that's fun on the pavement, Ted. Check this one out. Up next is the 2021 Porsche 718 I mean, GT4 two-door coupe. Approximately 3,000 miles. 4.0 liter turbo, black with black leather interior, red race tech roll bar, six point racing harness on driver's seat, four point harness on passenger seat have been added. Two zone automatic climate control, full bucket seats, Bose surround sound system, Apple CarPlay including Siri, navigation including Porsche Connect, fuel cap with aluminum look finish. Oh, this is one great looking car, Ted. By the way, the 718 Cayman GT4 named after the car that won the Targa Florio in 1960 for Porsche, the 718. Famous car, famous race. You know, at one time, Porsche considered taking the idea of the Cayman GT4 with a highly tuned version of the downsized two liter turbo flat four found everywhere else in the Cayman range. Well, the engine under the, well, I was gonna say under the hood, under the bonnet, in the back of this thing, Makes 493 horsepower. It'll get you zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds, Ted, and 196 miles an hour if you're interested in doing that on the racetrack. They did finally put the three liter engine in, which is currently also found on the Porsche 911. Hold on, hold on. In my book, I've always loved the 911. I think these Caymans are actually better looking vehicles. Oh, very good looking and excellent handling. It's probably one of the most desirable Porsches there are. Hey, 132. And I think the price shows. The reserve is still on, Dave. Again, the reserve is the minimum that the buyer will take for the vehicle. Right now, they're encouraging to lift the reserve. I hear the horn. I should buy it. I really should keep going at it, I'll be honest with you. 133. 133. 133. 133. Yes or no? Gotta go. I have sold $132,000. Congratulations. Put it on buyer number. 20407. Dave is with the proud new owner.
Well, our buddy Eric did it again, and this time, Eric, you did it with a little help from your friends. Yeah, a lot. So choose your friends very wisely. <laughs> I did not. Learn from my mistakes, now. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. I've been looking at it the whole time here. Actually, you didn't even know you bought it when the gavel went down. I didn't even know. I'm just bidding. Yeah, I had. I thought somebody else actually had it, and then they came to me, and I said I wanted it. And I went, wow, oh, that's awesome. That's a wrap for this edition. Join us next time, folks. We'll be coming to you from Dalton, Georgia.